you for coming to our session entitled Let's Makey Makey Something. When the schedule came out, we got a little nervous as to we are up against the keynote speaker. <laughs> um, and obviously she was very awesome, so we are glad that you, I guess, chose our session to learn something about what we do with Makey Makey. So just to kind of get a feel in the room, how many is, is Makey Makey brand new to a lot of you or, okay? So that's good. Those of you that didn't have your hands up, have you just have heard about it or you've actually used it, applied it, integrated it? Okay. I own it. Okay. So we want this to be, you know, very interactive. I mean, we're going to kind of front load a little bit and kind of tell you what, what we do with Makey Makey's and a couple of our, our um, different classes and then give you time to just play. We have some ideas and some lessons that you can kind of just um, work your way through. But even though I brought elementary teachers with me today, I have brought this into the high school. So, I mean, Makey Makey can be any, any grade level. Just because we're showing you maybe some elementary examples doesn't mean you can't expand your, your thinking and be creative and use it really in all different areas. Okay, so then who we are. So I am Susan Naylor, so I'm the Tech Integrationist for the Rokana Surrey Community School District. And I'm Terry Samuels and I teach third grade. I have the reading and the science for departmentalized. And I'm Emma Hoffman, I teach fourth grade math and science. Okay, so kind of our, our why, and I kind of came up with, you know, Iowa Core can be fun. I mean, I know we have to teach Iowa Core, right? But there's lots of ways that you can integrate technology into the Iowa Core and still make it purposeful. So my big thing as a tech integrationist is we are very fortunate at Pocahontas. We do have a lot of technology, but I just don't bring technology in the classroom to say, hey, we got some makey makeys, let's just have fun and use them. So I always ask the questions, you know, why, how can it tie in, and so it's always definitely purposeful. But a little bit of our, oops, a little bit of our technology is we are one-to-one -one Chromebook devices in two through 12. You don't have to be one-to-one -to, -one to have Makey Makey's by no means. Uh, we do have 25 plus Makey Makey kids, but you can have stations and have just one or two <coughs> and still do the same thing. Um, we use the Scratch app, which is free. And then Terry's gonna show, we did, we use Seesaw, we're a Seesaw for schools. So our kids do the Seesaw reflection a lot. Um, so that parents can get a window into our into our our classrooms, and then I'll just we just listed the EL standards there for third grade. Terry will go into those when she talks about her her project, and the same with whoops, and the same with Emma, her NGSS standards when she talks about her science unit. So she'll go into more depth of those. Okay, so what is Makey Makey? It's just a tool that we happen to use to engage in some Iowa Core content. So it is basically just an electric invention tool that creates an external controller for your computer. So it's just taking your computer, your keyboard, and having kids be creative with conductive material and then making it do the things that you want it to do. So, you know, we'll start with probably pretty simple, with some, some of you don't have a whole lot of knowledge in it, but then that's where the scratch coding comes in, that you can really get a lot more creative thinking and do a deeper dive into what you want your kids to do. So, in order for me to come into their classes, I, I, I told both of them, and they're, they're very, you know, they're, they're absolutely great teachers, but I said, we have to give the kids a day of play. You know, and sometimes that's hard for teachers to say, uh, a day of play. I said, yes, we have to give them a day just to play. Otherwise, they're not going to get to the learning target that we want them to get. So we did just that. So it basically the teaching strategy was just that inquiry-based instruction. And then I'm not going to go through this. It's, it's linked on the, you know, in our resources. But then basically this is just what we, you know, did. I went through how to set it up what it was, you know, basically step-by-step -step kind of instructions type of stuff. And then we did the piano, which you guys will play around with a little bit. But, I mean, that's what we did. And then we had some I can statements at the end, so there was some accountability at the end of the learning. They had to record what they, some learning on a, on a Padlet. But I would say they would echo the importance of the day of play. Yeah, because it, it keeps them from 
trying to figure out what's all in the box and what, what everything does while they're trying to actually do the, the task, they can play with it first. Mm -hmm. And then they know those words, circuit board, alligator clips, they know what we're talking about, they know what's in that little box that they're dying to open up and see what's inside, so it really helped. So when you say day of, like, how long was that actually? Oh, just one class period. Like an hour? Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to transition into give Terry the floor with her third grade. <laughs> so I have third grade, and um, I've noticed in the last couple of years that when the kids come to me in third grade, they've already started that, I don't want to read that, or I don't want to do that. And so when I started thinking about my biography unit, and, you know, biographies are always so exciting, right? <laughs> so I thought, okay, we got to figure out some way to get this a um, little more exciting so that I can get the kids more engaged. So what we did was, um, well, these are, the, these are the standards that I tried to get into then. So the reading, way down at the bottom, I should have put that on top, read and comprehend informational text. So that is one of my standards. I want them to get into informational text. Then um, the speech and language, I want them to be able to relay what they have learned to other people. Then the writing, they have to write it first and figure out what, how I'm going to organize it and get it into something that is actually going to convey um, their knowledge. And I'm getting into some of the 21st century skills, the tech lit, trying to get a way to produce a digital project so that they are learning some of the technology. Okay? So I, I kind of put together the, the steps, so I'm, I'm just going to do a little overview. We studied biographies and what, what biographies are, and then we did an interview and wrote a biography about a classmate, and then we started our actual research project and then made the performance task. So I'll go into a little detail about each one of those. So first, um, if you don't know what a biography is, you have to get into what reading biographies and figure out, okay, what, what's actually included in a biography? So I had them read some biography books in you know paper and then get online and read some different biographies. And then we came up and generated some questions to ask a partner. If I was going to interview someone and write a biography about them, what would be some questions? What kinds of things did I find out in the biographies that I read so that now I can come up with some questions? So we generated questions as a class, and then we drew names for a partner, and we interviewed each other, and then made a biography. So we wrote out a biography. So we, we kind of have the whole biography thing um, under our head. Then we got into trying to find someone in history that we could, some famous person or somebody of interest that they wanted to learn more about. And that was the research project. And they had a graphic organizer and they had different books and online tools. One of my favorite online tools that I found last year was duckster.com. It had some really cool um, things that they could go into and find information about the, the different people. It even had a list of different biographies or bi people you could do biographies about so that it gave them, they started listening through and they're like, oh, I want to do this one. Because sometimes they don't have an idea of who they want to do either. So duckster.com is a good resource. Then I had a graphic organizer for them as they were going through with some of those questions that we had generated for our partners. And they were looking for answers to those questions like they were interviewing that person. And then they put that stuff on the graphic organizer. And then they had to, there were like 10 or 12 different things. And on the Makey Makey, when we get into that, you'll notice that there's only five clips that they can um, Put the information on so they had to go through and pick out what are the five things that you want to portray about your person to someone else and they put those in really nice organized third grade sentences and um, with correct punctuation and capital letters and all of that stuff so you know the rubric had all of that information on there for them to use as a focus 
And then we finally got to the creating day. And the very first picture up there was them trying to create the bottle person. So I had all of these different bottles. You can do pop bottles, you can do juice bottles, you know, any, any kind of bottle. And then I bought um, different size styrofoam balls and they used those for the heads. So the, the first day they um, painted the head if they had an African American or if they had, you know, some of them needed their head to be painted. And then they started decorating their bottle. So they had to go into pictures of their person and figure out what, what kind of clothes does this person wear? What do they, you know, how am I going to portray my, my person? And then we had all kinds of, you know, fabric and um, different materials that they could use to make clothes or whatever they were gonna do around this bottle. As you can see the middle person there, that is um, Martin Luther King. And he has his little podium because he's giving his speech. And um, then down at the bottom, this young man is very interested in sports. It, it's very hard for me to get him to do um, any kind of research unless it's sports related. And so he chose Tom Brady. And so he made his into um, the player. Yeah, I think, I think we can go ahead and just play it. Hi, my name is Tom Brady. Tom Brady was born in California in 1977, and he was by the NFL when he was Tom Brady is famous for winning four Super Bowls with one team. He is a great quarterback with the most as he touched. Can you play for the New England Patriots? So, what we did then was the kids had to include something conductive on their um, bottle person. So they could either have it, you know, they, some of them came up with they wanted buttons or some of them wanted um, an external one. So that's why you see some of them have the boards on the outside and then they put tin foil or knobs or something that they could hook their makey makey clips up to. And then um, they had to go into Scratch <coughs> and code the Scratch and record their voice with the sentence that one of the five sentences that they had written. And then they could go through and um, press on the little silver spot and it would say their, their fact. And there was a lot of problem solving that went into it because sometimes they would plug it in and they, they push on it. And, well, why doesn't it say anything? Why isn't it saying my fact? I have it right here. Well, sometimes they had their makey makey uh, alligator clip was hooked up to the space bar and they were, you know, doing, doing the wrong one. They were clicking on the wrong one, so they just had to figure out and problem solve what they had to do to move things around and, and get it the right way. Then we tried to go into, um, the thought was to share it with parents and other classes. And that's hard when, you, first of all, we didn't have enough um, Makey Makey for two classrooms, so they were sharing them between two classes. So they had to unhook them and then have the next class hook them up. So if I was going to have a family thing, we'd have to almost have them on two different days. And then, you know, it's, it's talking, and so you almost have to have your headphones plugged in, and so the parents would have to run around, you know, having headphones. So we ended up doing that with the kids. The kids brought their headphones, because of course everybody at school has their headphones, and they just went around and were able to listen to everybody else's, which they thought was awesome. And then in order to get it to be portrayed to parents, we ended up putting it on Seesaw and we recorded them going through theirs and then they were able to um, upload and they had to write about it. Some people, some of the kids were better at writing about it and you know the, but that's a formative assessment also. But here is one of, this is Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was born in Ohio on August 5th, 1930, and died on August 25th, 2012. After college, Neil became a test pilot and then was an astronaut for NASA for the first man to open the moon. The footprints of Neil and Buzz Aldrin are still in the moon. Neil 
Gold is the career most flying aircraft. And I think that one wasn't working for him at that, at that point. So he was <coughs> discouraged with that. But, um, is that, is that, okay. Any questions about that so far? So kind of brought their biographies to life, and, and I had kids that were coming up to me and saying, did you know so-and-so <coughs> did? And you know, then you get excited, and like, no, I didn't. Tell me more. So um, it was just fun to see biographies come more, become more engaging. And now Emma will explain what she did in her science class. Yeah, so we brought the Makey Makeys into my science class for a unit I wrote on circuitry. Uh, so students explored different circuits and how energy was converted from one form to another. So the NG NGSS standards that I focused on were, are these two up here, um, transferring energy, and the energy is present whenever there are, um, is sound, light, heat, electric currents. Uh, and I had been noticing in my science class that a lot of these concepts are very difficult, and so the more hands-on that I can make it for them, the better they understand it and are able to retain it. I didn't want it to just be me up there presenting the information, them uh, having it for a little bit or enough to take a test, and then it's gone. So the more investigations we could give them, and like I said, hands-on activities really helped with that. So my progression, was first introducing electrical circuits and having them explore with just open and closed circuits at first. So they created a simple circuit. And then next was when we brought in the Makey Makeys. So we, after the data play, we brought them back in to test conductive materials and we also put out some non-conductive materials. Um, and then they were able to see, okay, why is this one conductive? Why isn't this working? <coughs> what happens when those conductive materials are hooked up to the Makey Makey? They made, we were using the piano, um, so they saw that when they did have a conductive material, uh, I was able to make the piano play. And then we had them record their thoughts on a Padlet for that. Um, Next, we went a little deeper and we made parallel circuits. Uh, so they weren't just working with series circuits. Uh, they also had to do that. And then they created their own switches. Since they knew which materials were conductive, they were able to uh, have work with materials that we gave them uh, to create switches. And then finally, they built a model that had different circuits and switches, and then the Makey Makey, which produced the sound energy, and we portrayed their work at a circuit open house. So the picture in the far left, top left corner shows the tray of materials that we gave them to explore with, with the Makey Makey. Uh, so you see there's some insulators and some conductors on that tray, and then we also encouraged them to go around the classroom and find different materials. They went out to their locker and grabbed some, so they were exploring with all sorts of materials. Um, and then for the circuits, there wasn't a lot of modeling or direction. We let them, we gave them the materials, and then they had to make the light bulb light, and so they figured out, okay, there has to be that loop, that closed circuit, so the electrons could flow. Um, and then, again, with the switches, they put those onto their circuits. Uh, we introduced the project next, so they were given certain constraints and restrictions, so they had to have a parallel circuit, they had to have a series circuit, they had to make sound energy with the Makey Makey, uh, they had to have at least one switch, and then 
we let them start building and I mean, they painted these projects. Um, we really encouraged them to come up with a problem and then their project was the need or it solved that problem. Uh, so the, bo the bottom picture shows it's a cat kennel or a dog kennel. Um, and so they told me that they never know when their animal escapes. So their solution was when the door would prop open, uh, the conductive materials would hit each other and then and they made an alarm go off when that happened. So that's just an example of how they came up with that problem and then their project solved it. Um, and then there was even more problem solving. Uh, I had one group who they were using a lot of lights on theirs and they were trying to make it work with a series circuit. So they had to think back about what we learned about parallel circuits and series circuits and that the more lights that you have, the better it is to use parallel circuits. So there was some thinking about what they had already learned and then they were practicing those skills building the project. Um, and then closed and open circuits, if their light wasn't lighting, maybe there was a break somewhere. Uh, and then with the coding as well using Scratch. Maybe they didn't have it programmed to the right alligator clip or the down arrow space bar. So lots of problem solving there too. Um, and collaboration, they worked in small groups. So we did have enough uh, makey makeys so that we could all present at the same time. So we invited parents and other classrooms to uh, our circuit <coughs> open house and uh, we had all the projects set up down in the gym and then everyone could just walk around and see the different projects. Uh, the pamphlets that I made also had questions in there so it was like a performance task. I mean parents were asking kids to explain their projects, how it worked, where energy was present, like uh, they had to use a lot of academic vocabulary that they had learned so uh, the kids were really proud to show their work there. It was a great experience. And that, it's, it's crazy. When I, I've been in Pocahontas for six years now, and, and they do this during the day. And I said, are parents going to come during the day? But they do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they get yeah. off for an hour lunch or whatever, and they, they literally come during the day and engage in activities like this. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. Okay, so now that we kind of staged kind of what we did, we now want you to experience Makey Makey and then maybe some ideas would resonate with you on how you can take some of these ideas back to your, to your classrooms. So what we did is on, on the slide, or the resources, I just linked to Makey Makey Practice Lesson. There are a ton of resources out there. I mean, lots of people um, curate information that you can big borrow steal adapt to your own needs so I just gave you that link and then the task cards Emma and Terry made some scenarios <laughs> for you just to practice to kind of guide you if you don't want to use those you don't have to if you just love where you want to play but if you need a little bit more direction on how to get started then we have that for you and then the makey makey piano and then scratch coding but I think those things are on the actual sheets to go to those places. So we just want to give you a little bit of time to, to play around a little bit, ask us questions. Um, we don't necessarily have all the answers, but we will sure try to provide you with them. So we want you to be able to feel like you can walk away, like, hey, we can make me do this, or, or and make you make some money like $20. They're, they're very inexpensive, okay. as far as tech goes. And those of you in the back, we have, if you want to come up or, and watch, we thought we'd have a room that had tables, so we had to do kind of a makeshift room with tables. And this is if you want to go to the scratch. Okay, my biography is very good. She's got the piano. She's got the piano. I had a scratch. And, but, um, 
I mean, we have our small groups too. So there was on the day that we did the the plan, I don't know if you guys want this one too. Um, on the day that we did the plan, and on the day that Oh, you mean, um, no, you And of their person, and then the poster. Yep. And then you wouldn't take. It would take less time. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Heard it. Um. So I also brought the Makey Makeys into my math classroom. And after the science, they didn't need that day to play. I mean, they already knew what they were doing, and they were very familiar with Scratch, too. So they were working on writing story problems and then solving their story problems. So they created a story, a word problem, and then they had to come up with some answer options, some distractors, and then the correct answer. Uh, and then what they would do was find some sort of conductive material to put next to each answer option. Uh, and then they would put the alligator clips onto each one and have to go into Scratch and then code that to then tell the person who is figuring out the problem if it was correct or incorrect. And then we had like a gallery walk around the room where they went around and they solved each other's problems. So that was another way that we used it.
So do you see how you can do what you're transforming? So it's kind of fun to make a human, yeah. you know, and then somebody lets go, and then you say, well, the heart is open now, and that goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and then you want, like, the but I want to say, for Oh, somebody's got it on.
So what I did is like, this will be What do you mean, like, the computer can play? Well, I've done it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I've done it once. Yeah. Well, she had, I mean, Christmas wires and Christmas lights and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the Makey Makey was just for the audio part. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think that was for the green one. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, yeah. Yes. She would have to do that. But they oh, all that's why. Yeah. Well, she did yeah. 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 You know, yeah. how can yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, 
you want to copy that?
that's what I did. I bought the sentence. So then when they clicked on it, the sentence came It just kind of, yeah, you just kind of thought it was good. Share what we do. We can add our 